we're back for another exciting episode of The Spicy Life. I am your relationship expert and magnetic matchmaker, Spicy Mari. And to join me in the G-spot, that is guest spotlight, don't get scared, we have the amazing, the incredible Wesley Armstrong. And the crowd goes wild for this <sighs> phenomenal film director. Yes, Wesley. Okay, I am super happy to have you on The Spicy Life Show. It is an honor. Um, I'm happy I caught you before you're like, way too cool for school and don't answer your phone. Ooh, I will um, never be that. <laughs> so shout out to Alyssa for plugging uh, yes. me with you. <laughs> but uh, I want to frame this episode around uh, how to lead a lady, okay? okay? But before we get into like all my tantalizing questions, I start everybody off with a very intimate question. When did you first fall in love with yourself? And with myself? With yourself. When did you first fall in love with yourself? That's a good question. Um... That's a good question because I, I think you go through these different phases in life where you know you're you're trying to find yourself and it took me a while to find myself I grew up in Japan and so when I moved to the States I wanted to be black you know okay. I wanted to like <laughs> find my find my blackness because like I grew up in such a melting pot so I found myself you know just trying to devour you know beef dvds every rap album i can get oh, a wow. hold of um you know smack dvds uh early you know just i had a, so many bootleg videos i was just trying to devour it and that's how i got the name what's good i was listening to so much dip set um and then uh and then i got robbed <laughs> and i was like look i'm from japan y'all i don't know what y'all talking about i try to have a new york accent uh a Texas accent, a Florida accent, and you know, it was all terrible. Um, <laughs> none of those worked out. None for you. of those worked out. Um, so I guess, you know, it started with admitting, hey, I grew up here, mm -hmm. you know, so I'm not used to the things and how things are here. And I don't think, you know, falling in love with myself started happening to like my mid 30s, mm. you know, like when I really started trusting myself and feeling comfortable with just being like, look, I'm a nerd. I like these things. I'm not into this. Uh, and just being okay with that. So. so give me, I want you to try to define a moment when you were like, I'm a dope individual and I choose me. I choose self. I love who I am. Was there a defining moment for you? Something that you even had to overcome and come back from and you were like, damn. I'm that man. Maybe when I started creating content online, you know, like it took me a while even then, uh, you know, trying to be funny, uh, trying to make videos for everybody else as opposed to myself. Mm. Um, and you come, you you know, I, I think people can read authenticity just online in general. And so when you're trying to create content for everybody else as opposed to yourself, uh, there's a wall you hit. Yeah. And so when I hit, when I was like, you know what? these are the things I like, this is the content I'm gonna make. That's when, you know, I kind of had an explosion and, you know, the floodgates open in terms of like followers and, and brand deals and things like that. So I was like, oh, I should have just been myself the whole the time. The entire time. Yeah. <laughs> so. we, we wind up finding out like, we're pretty cool. I don't know oh, what yeah. I was thinking. I love I wasn't that. thinking. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking about everybody else, so. How did we decide we wanted to be a film director? Cause that's like one of the most coolest positions ever. Man, um, I think I've always I've always wanted my name in lights in some degree. You know, that's what I would always say as a kid. But um, I was doing photography, and uh, an instructor told me, "Hey, if you want to understand video and film, take pictures." So I took pictures of everything, and I had a mentor, and I followed him around, and I was like, you know, I think I could do this. So I look at filmmaking kind of like you know one it's it's all pretend but it's also like playing with toys except with real people so when <laughs> I break it down like that I'm like you know what I can pretend really well and I can pretend with other people really well so it's like a big it's just you know just re refueling that kid inside of me you know yeah so this is like one of the easiest ways to do that recently you just like finished which seemed like a crazy project and you probably have worked on something and dropped something even since then but i saw that you had direct uh 
Kevin Hart's masterclass. Yes. Is that one of like the biggest projects like you've done? It's definitely up there for sure. Yeah, I mean, he's the biggest comedian in the world. So I would say, yeah. Dust shoulders you know. off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that one That one was a, a, a great one to, to do, man. So in coming in that moment when you're like, ah, I can't believe like I've got here. Tell me some about the struggles that you've had to go through before you got to the point where you're like directing for Kevin Hart. The struggles that I've had to go mm -hmm. through. What are some of the challenges? As a filmmaker, yep. or, I mean, as a filmmaker, you're you're constantly up against that that wall where you're working with people that are like, "Hey, do this for me. I can get you some exposure." Mm. You know, so trying to trying to make money doing the thing you want to be great at is always a is always a struggle. But you know, you have to. You know, it's called paying your dues. You know, you have to pay your dues. So you know, paying your dues. That's just. That's just the name of the game, ladies and gentlemen. Um, <laughs> Sometimes paying <laughs> dues looks like getting no dues. <laughs> yeah, but you know, you give yourself give yourself grace in in those moments. You know, like I, I feel like the best times are the times where it's like I need money. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So like that grind and that hustle. Yeah. Uh, being relentless with that work. You know, I've I've been the same the whole way through. Uh, just always kind of being of service you know um like how can i help you mm. that's that's always helped me out later on down the road and you know i've always been the type of person that's like let me plant seeds that are gonna blossom later yeah. um and i've just realized in this industry uh you know every interaction you have with someone is the job is maybe five to seven years down the road you know so um i try to meet as many people as possible <laughs> you know even even with kevin you know that that relationship didn't start until like I think it started like 2014 mm -hmm. you know and so like I've you know been the type to just be like hey checking in I just did this uh you know like I'm I'm constantly trying to create something for the hope of an opportunity later on or yeah. at some point so um I stayed tapped in with him stayed tapped in with his team and you know uh there are people around him that would advocate for me that's how that job ended up happening so in terms of struggle like I still feel like I'm still struggling <laughs> I still feel well, let like me tell it. you why I love what you just said right now you just gave us some nuggets right I call them like spicy tips what you just described without even like maybe even thinking about it was like mastering the art of nurturing relationships and I think that that's what makes the dip you know the difference between those who succeed in this industry or in life period mm -hmm. and those who don't and what you said was like okay there's these like continuous touch points of checking in, making sure the person is good. You mentioned being of service, like what value can I offer this person? And then you said you had advocates, right? So because you built other relationships with people, they now could speak on your behalf about yeah. your skill set and what you can contribute. And that's all from you putting yourself out there and yeah. shaking hands, kissing babies, right? Yep. But you also mentioned time. That's another element that I think we're a society of like instant gratification. We want it now. Yeah. And we're not thinking about the long game. Yeah. Even though you want it now, you realize like when I think about things I wanted back then, and I was like, yo, I'm ready now. I wasn't mm -hmm. ready. You know, like if I look at myself three years ago, I'm like, oh, I'm ready for feature films. I could do this big blockbuster. And I may have been able to work my way around it, but like the knowledge I have now, I wasn't ready. Then, <laughs> you know, so like I, I enjoy reflecting on the journey you know like in the moment i'm like oh, man this ain't it but <laughs> you know when i look back i'm like ah oh, that was it you know mm -hmm. so i try to take advantage of you know those moments where you know after that after that moment of like that big gratification and that 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 finish line moment like what was i experiencing through that like let me mm -hmm. go back and appreciate that and if i'm in it you know it's hard to appreciate it when you're in it but yep. i try to like bring myself back it's I, I feel like i'm this all the time i'm just i'm going through it like the thing dropped last week but i still find myself this week like what am i doing with my life <laughs> you know because so, now you have to find something next i have to find the next thing so i yeah. feel you on that and, and i feel like life is this like roller coaster of projects roller coaster of emotions uh but it's how you handle them right mm -hmm. one of the things that i was excited about to bring you in was I feel like directors, because you were continuously doing people management, energy management mm -hmm. of a large staff of people, right? Production crew and stuff, and then talent as well. You guys have mastered the art of 
guiding people, telling them what to do to get to the goal of what you maybe need for that project. So you have to be very masterful in how you pull things out of people, right? And I see you guys sometimes as like directors needing to get a certain line or certain emotion from someone so that you can deliver on, you know, the end of your project. So I want to know when you're on set, because we're going to talk word first, how do you pull the things that you need from talent when talent might not be understanding or being resistant? Usually by that time when I'm on set, the talent has already told me who the character is. Mm. Um, so to get them to a certain point, I guess prior to being on set, uh, I, I'm always of the, uh, the idea of like, say the line is like, I gotta put gas in the car. Okay. You know, what's the thought before it? Mm -hmm. You know, like what is the thought before it? Like, damn, I didn't fill up last night. I gotta go put gas in the car, you know? Or is it like, oh, I told him to put gas in the car yesterday. Why didn't he do it? You know what I mean? Yeah. So like, there's a, there's a motion, there's a thought before the line that'll give you the emotion that you need mm -hmm. every time. So I've, I always go with that rule of thumb. And so are you prepping them in advance? Like you said, you, before the scene, you're telling them like, okay, let's talk about your thoughts. Let's work through this. Are they running lines with you? And then when they come to set, they're like, let's go. Usually like on my last short film, I'm in production right now for a short. Um, I'll explain the scene to them and then I'll let them do their thing. Mm. You know, I let them, I, I trust the actors to go out and find that emotion. And I'll, I'll tell someone like, hey, you're the leader of this scene. So you're gonna have to guide them throughout it. So let them practice it and then I'll come back and I'll check it out and then I'll tweak, you know, I'll tweak just a little bit here and there, but usually they're they're ready to go. Now, for someone that that just can't get there, mm -hmm. and I've been in those situations before, um, you know, I, I just feel like in at this level and in this industry, you have it or you don't. Mm. You know what I mean? Especially, you know, when it comes comes to acting, uh, like it shouldn't take much mm -hmm. to get to get you to an area of delivery. Um, so yeah. And I think if it's if it's a very green actor, um, I'd have another actor work with them. Like, hey, work out the scene with them, mm. and then then bring it to me because it's uh, it's not a good use of my time to sit there. And like, <laughs> Coach, I got to set up the shots, <laughs> you know. You're like, I got ten other things yeah, I got to do. Exactly. So okay, so. I'm going to connect this now to okay. relationship because you have a girlfriend. I do have a girlfriend. And uh, I love that you are able to, one, multitask a uh, career and that climb plus relationship. A lot of people think that they have to choose one or the other. Oh, it's, it's been a learning process. Okay. Sure. So walk me through that then because most people say, well, I can't be in relationship until I've made it. Relationships are a distraction. How are you multitasking and juggling relationship plus your growth and climb? Well, I guess I'm kind of lucky because Brandy, she's in the industry as well. You know, she's a very independent, very uh, self-motivated person. Uh, so, uh, you know, at, I think at first, you know, I didn't understand. You know, I was work, 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 mm -hmm. you know, and um, I didn't understand communication. I didn't understand uh time management mm. you know a lot of a lot of these different things and now that i'm older you know we've been to counseling so i've had to learn those those different things mm -hmm. um on how to balance both and it's still it's still kind of tough for me you know but i love you know she's she's super supportive yeah th throughout it you know um so yeah okay so now we're going to, because I love that you mentioned the counseling part. Now here I go, okay? Oh, this is this is bad. <laughs> I think I got myself in trouble. No. <laughs> but you said earlier, when you have talent and they can't um, pull out something, right? You would hope that they have like enough experience or that they're seasoned enough and that they've prepped and they rehearsed. What I'm hearing in that is even when it comes to like relationship, we want the person to have done all of this, like maybe internal work or this growth and be the full package when they show up for us. But the, the truth of the matter is, is there's still work to be done. Mm -hmm. We're still strengthening our relationship skills along the way. And you are running lines with Brandy. Mm. 
this one you're not sending off for someone else to like yeah. work through. But we could even say that like the therapist or the counselor who's helping you is actually maybe you're tagging her in to like help assist or I don't know if it's a woman or man that was counseling, but woman, she, there's additional yeah. like help that you guys are getting along the way. Translation, translator. Translator, there yes. you go. So with that, I want to hear now how you lead or direct Brandy in your relationship. You know, I think about questions like that and I, you know, I think when it comes to men and women, there are definitely roles for mm -hmm. people to play, but I don't think, um, I, I feel like, you know, with Brandy and I, our relationship is, is different because I'm not like leading her and she's not leading me. We're just kind of like walking together, mm -hmm. you know? And, you know, I, I think early on when I used to think about relationships, I'm like, it has to be like this. Mm -hmm. The relationship's got to be like this. But I feel like we've found um, peace in doing things our way, mm. you know? So. Um, what does that look like? What's our way? Our way is just. Do you have a non-traditional relationship? Does it look like you guys like made up the rules as you go, went along? I think we're, you know, it's constant. We're constantly learning, you know, we're constantly learning how to maneuver and navigate different, different things. You know, Brandon and I were, we are definitely extremely private with our relationship. <laughs> and here uh, I go. Tell me, tell me. <laughs> no, we, we are. Um, but we, you know, we're uh, of the type of like, uh, if we don't, we don't. You know, like you know how some people like tell what's going on in the relationship. Mm -hmm. Oh man, da, da, da. like we don't we don't really do that. You know, we're more so like we gotta figure this out. And if we are telling, it's to the counselor. <laughs> so you're consulting um, with each other. You're not yeah. letting people in your business yeah, outside nah, of what's going nah, on. Nah, because like when you do that, you I, I've found in the past like people start forming opinions about the other person mm -hmm. you're with, and um, and then it gets weird. Yeah, you know, and I I just. I've never wanted that for us. And so we've we've kind of been on that same page. We're like, yo, all right, we got to figure this out. You know, we're not going to involve people in this for them to have an opinion about you or opinion about me because then it just gets weird. Hey, now we're back together mm -hmm. and working it out. Like, the, I – I don't know, man. When I was younger, I used to be like, yo, hey, man, this girl's going to, like, <laughs> He's been telling all the juice. Yeah. And so <laughs> now it's just like, man, that, like, my relationship with her is probably the, the thing I protect the most, for sure. So protection, this is yeah. one of the ways that you direct yeah. in your leadership is protection. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So I'm still going to, I'm still going to knock. So, <laughs> <Hello>. <laughs> so with that, right, because every woman wants to feel protected and in return mm -hmm. we protect our partners as well yeah who's the more emotional one mm. who demonstrates more emotions i say brandy okay yeah she's more emotional how do we manage those situations when she's emotional well it depends depends you know because i could be emotional too with stuff um It depends. It like every day is different. Different, you know. Er, different situations call for different things. But I, I guess I'd have to be specific about about it. Like I can't say like I am the greatest mm -hmm. when it comes to managing an emotion. Um, but I will try. You know, I'll try to figure out a different way to approach things and another thing is you know like with communication i think i think this is what i think i think there's heavy emotion on one side and heavy sensitivity on one side mm. so for me i would say i'm sensitive mm -hmm. you know and uh i'm sensitive to how things are said you mm. know um and she is not so my interpretation of how things are said can be taken the wrong I'll, I'll take it the wrong way mm. you know and um, so for me what I have to do is I have to go back to what was said and be like all right let me 
try to hear this differently because maybe it meant this, you know, as opposed to me thinking it was a diss, mm. you know? So I guess I'm emotional too. <laughs> <laughs> we all are emotional creatures. Yeah. Some There's usually one person in the relationship who demonstrates it more. Like mm -hmm. physically we see it in their face expression. Verbally we hear it. Um, uh, we feel it in their energy. And then there's someone else who may not be as like demonstrative but mm -hmm. feel it just as intensely. And so usually like you're one or the other in the relationship. Mm -hmm. But when it comes to like your uh, relationship with Brandy, it sounds like you are processing your emotions while you're trying to also like tackle the situation. Like there's something that it made you feel. So now you're taking a beat and like, okay, why am I feeling this way? Did mm -hmm. you really intend to hurt me? Or am I just misinterpreting this based on? So I feel like it would be more misinterpretation on my part because like Brandy, she's just like, when you meet her, she's just, super nice she's a sweet person man like yeah she's just like always thoughtful like she's always has like my best intention and like me i'm more i would be more absent-minded to a lot of stuff <laughs> like i'd be i'd be so like i'm so scatterbrained like this is different she's organized i'm like i feel like my brain looks like Paint here, paint here, paint here. Mm. All right, let me do a little bit right here. Let me do a little bit right here. Let me do it right here. And she is just like, we have to take care of this mm -hmm. and this first. Once this is done, then I can do this. Um, so it's a little bit of managing my my creative, like sporadic mm -hmm. movements, um, and then trying to be able to focus like how she focuses, which is tough for me. Why do you have to be able to focus the way that she focuses? Uh, well, to get if we're on a, getting a task done, mm -hmm. like I'll have to focus on that before I jump to something else. Like if it's something that we're doing together, I'll definitely be the first to veer off before we get that get that one thing knocked out. And then how does she reel you back in? Then if she's like organized and you're kind of messy, how does she get you more organized? <sighs> You have to ask her. <laughs> you You're like somehow it. she just like works this magic on me. <laughs> yeah, she she's able to get get me there. Um, but sometimes you know, like sometimes it's it's tough for me. I ain't gonna lie. I'll be like, I can't do it. I can't do this one thing. I got to do something else. But at least you're honest about it. Yeah. So like that helps, right? It's not yeah. like you lack the self awareness. It's just like, okay, but the execution part, we can expect yeah. the challenge. That's why I've been I've been journaling a lot lately too. Um, you know, just in terms of like self awareness, because like sometimes you you kind of wake up and feel guilty you didn't do something. You mm -hmm. know, you ever feel like that? Yeah, for sure. Uh, like waking up later than i'm supposed to wake up like i'll be i'll be walking away or walking around like damn i feel guilty like i don't, I don't like that mm -hmm. so now i've just been like journaling those thoughts out like why do i feel guilty that i didn't wake up at 4 a.m to go work out you know like it's, i can live with i can live with that like i'm up you know mm -hmm. so how does the journaling help you process though i don't know man i've only been doing it two weeks <laughs> but <laughs> something about it is making you feel better yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, I feel lighter, a little bit more free, I think. You know, I don't know. That meditation, like, trying to split the thoughts up of, like, what people say these things do for you versus, like, how's this actually making me feel? Mm -hmm. It's still, like, hazy, you know? Well, but, it sounds like it's positive because you haven't stopped. You're, like, consistently doing two weeks. Trying. But I think one thing, so I know sometimes the answer to the things that I ask you guys in advance. Um, so when you say, I don't know, that's okay. I'm going to tell you. Yeah. So a part of uh, putting, you know, pin to pad, uh, similar to maybe like even in your industry, mm -hmm. is you get to actually like visualize uh, first when you're using your imagination and then write it down and actually then visually, physically get to see what mm -hmm. that thought is. Then you get to play it back to yourself when you read it. And then you actually get to hear your voice. And so a part of it allows you to um, then rationalize or, right, like see, okay, was this a logical thought or feeling? Where did it come from? Where did it derive from? But when it's a fleeting thought and we don't write it down, 
we don't have time to sit with it and actually mm. think about does this make sense does thinking like this actually help me achieve my goal or does it hurt or hinder me mm -hmm. so it's very therapeutic in the sense of um also being able to go back and read it again and be like oh wow a year ago yeah i can't believe i thought like this how much i've grown right you get to see your evolution when it's on pen and pad and now it becomes like this historical book of notes that you get a reference later so there's like multiple elements yeah. to it I don't know why I've been afraid to go back and look at some of the shit I wrote. Why? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I thought about it today. I was like, I'm not going to read that. I just need to keep going. Well, you um, may not want to feel some of those things that you were feeling in that moment. Not. Right? But like, you are a master of creating sentiment, of making us, because I mean, and that's the way that I, like, when I'm watching TV or film, part of what I love about it is that it makes me travel through time, travel to moments, um, give me an experience and makes me feel something makes me emotional yeah. yeah the best projects make you emotional actually feel like what that artist is trying to convey on camera and so sometimes we don't feel like being sad or in a bad mood True. and if you captured that you may be like oh i don't feel like you know <laughs> feeling sad today i don't feel like feeling frustrated like i did you know two weeks yeah. ago i'd rather be in my happy place yep. so i'm gonna put a comedy on instead <laughs> yeah yeah definitely de i definitely used to uh think everything needs to be rainbows and sunshine and happy, you know, and I, you know, I realized, well, I learned that it's not always going to be like that. How did you meet Brandy? Was it on set? Did we date a colleague? No, <laughs> no. Um, I always tell a fake story. I well, want it's, the love story. Real. I want the real love story. The real, the real story The real is, love story. Um, I saw her at a party, <laughs> and this is true. I uh, I went up to her and I was like, "I love you," and then I walked off. Shut up! And I did. I walked off. I was like Batman, <laughs> disappearing <laughs> in the smoke. <laughs> um, but no, I I did that, and then um, we saw each other at another party, exchanged social media, and she saw that I was like goofy. And um, when I got her social media, I went to her very first photo. Take notes, guys. <laughs> I went to the very first photo and I was like, congrats, dot, 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 you've been stalked. And she, I know she looked at her messages like, what the hell, who is this? And so it was me. And so, um, you know, it was a, I want to say like a four month pursuit from then. Um, four months. Like four we months. just kept liking caption photo, like uh, putting captions in photos. No, we, what we, did we the four months pursuit numbers, like? But, you know, she, uh, she would say, she curved me, but I would say I played the long game. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> um, and uh, yeah, then we just, we found ourselves like always hanging out and she was just like, are we like together or something? I'm like, duh. So, um, so yeah, that's kind of like how we, how we began and we started creating videos together and. Okay, you started creating content. Mm -hmm. What's the fake story, I'm curious. Uh, the fake story was um, I had a I was I had a group of people around me and I was cracking jokes and everyone was laughing and I looked over my left shoulder because that's the shoulder I always look over because this is my best side <laughs> and I seen her through a crowd of people and it was like slow motion and as they crossed paths her faces our faces and eyes connected and I was like oh my god and so I was on a, like a little scooter and I floated to her <laughs> and I was like I love you. I looked off and I looked back in her eyes and then I walked off. And that was just And see. It's still the same thing. <laughs> still technically. Very the same similar story. without the like crowd surrounding <laughs> yeah. you and the scooter and the floating. But exactly. Like, we can yeah. do this. Um, no, the original is yeah. great. <laughs> but that's yeah, that's pretty much how we met. But you originally went up to her and said, I love you. I did. What provoked that? You were just physically attracted to her? Or why did because most people aren't coming up with like this? I huge just, verbal honestly, <laughs> exchange. I don't know, man. She was just like quiet. She wasn't talking to anybody, and you know, she her eyes are super captivating. And I was like, you know what? Let me just shoot this shot and then keep it moving. You know, I didn't think I was gonna see her again. Yeah. And then, uh, yeah, then I saw her again. I was like, I saw you at that party, 
she was like, yeah, you're really weird, you know. And To uh, tell someone that you love them, that's very bold. It is. But I love bold, right? Because I think that's what keeps things spicy. Yeah. But that's a, that's a, that is a crazy word choice, right? Because you knew you could potentially scare her off. True. Yeah. But you sound like you wanted to make an impression and be memorable. And that was more important to you. Yeah. I mean, you know, you never know. You know, like you never know, like this is the person you're going to be with for like this long. I mean, we've been together like almost eight years. Um, but yeah, it is. a. You know, when I think about it, it's it's beautiful. And it's also crazy at the same time because me, I am, you know, very jokey mm -hmm. a lot of the times, you know. So uh, that was my... I don't think I've ever said that as an opener to anybody. <laughs> uh, um, so the fact that it stuck and, you know, I mean it, it's crazy. How did you know you wanted to be in a relationship, though? With Brandy? Yeah. It was, just, I don't know, man. We were just, actually, I think it was uh, <laughs> the fact that our favorite movie was Dumb and Dumber. <laughs> Dumb and Dumber's good. And, uh, <laughs> um, you know, she's just like, she has her own, like, her own sense of comedy that's just you know it's a dry sense of humor but I don't know I just I like it I like it a lot you know what I like that you're smiling while you talk about your partner oh yeah Brandy's the best man no I think that when we get to see a man demonstrate uh like like the, the the smile the twinkle in the eye right mm -hmm. like the, the behavioral <laughs> demonstration <laughs> of like wow mm -hmm. you know i really care for my person and i'm happy to be with my person yeah. and i'm always excited when men come on the show and they speak positively about their partner but then also we get to see it right it's one yeah. thing to be like i mean yeah i love my girl but it's another thing to be like no my girl is like phenomenal oh yeah no brandy she's super tight man I, i'm constantly like surprised i'm like how did i get here you know how do i make sure i hold on to this um but yeah no she's she really is like really you know she's she's got like a lot of really like strong morals um she's she is who she presents you know and a lot of people they have like a wall of protection up but like brandy is who she is through and through you know do you feel like you had a wall of protection up or yeah. you came in your full authentic self for sure i i for sure you know she's definitely told me like you need to be more honest about the things that you go through because you know as a content creator online you put up the highlights mm. and the best moments and I've become an expert at that like yeah yo, like hey everything is is dope but she's always telling me you know like you need to talk about like the times where you doubt yourself and the things that you're going through or the things where you're not sure or the it's constant emails that you're sending out and all things like that and I'm like I don't think people want to know about that you know but some of my most successful projects have been those things where i just open up and be like yo i've never done a master class before i don't know what i'm doing yeah you know um so yeah i went through some of your um like clips and i was like oh he's also funny and entertaining right like usually the person behind the scenes or behind the camera you know can be very like stoic and like reserved right yeah. but you have a lot of personality that comes with also managing but also like in front of camera as well mm -hmm. so i'm like I, th I feel like it's rare that we get both in a yeah. person yeah for sure but you've like mastered that i have you know i've never been the type of person that's like uh you know in this industry they'll always tell you you need to focus on one thing mm -hmm. and uh i just couldn't do that I couldn't focus on one thing um, because I like everything. Yeah. You know, I like everything. And if you're thinking about, like, this life and the one life you have, like, to me it's a waste just to, like, not explore all of your talents, mm -hmm. you know? So in front of the camera, behind the camera, I know every position when it comes to filmmaking because I've, you know, I've paid my dues in every one of those departments. Um, so, yeah, I... You know, I look at it like, if you focus on one thing, this is how you'll take your career. It'll just kind of go like that. And if you focus on multiple things, your career will kind of go like this. Mm. You know, you're kind of bringing all these different attributes up. And I enjoy that a lot better than just kind of focusing on one thing because I'll miss out on all these other 
things that I really like to do, whether it's hosting, whether it's acting, whether it's creating sketches with my friends. Um, I think I've taken my time to enjoy everything that life has thrown at me. And it, yes, I'm very ambitious and I want so many other opportunities. I want to do so many other things. But in that process, like I've just enjoyed all of it, you know. So you're someone who likes to have like their hands in a lot of pots. You like doing yeah. it all, right? Jack of all trades when it comes to this industry. And you even said like, uh, you know, Brandy's one track when it comes to like organization and you're like, I think you said like a wall or, you know, paint splashed oh, everywhere yeah. or something. Paint splashed every place, yeah. <laughs> when uh, you entered into your relationship, right, mm -hmm. there's this like formal change you guys had of like, hey, we go together, like let's be together. How has she been able to help in the you being one track minded when it comes to partnership? Because sometimes personalities like that want lots of women or, you know, they want attention mm -hmm. from tons of people. But you are in a committed relationship mm -hmm. and that's requiring you to be one track minded. Mm -hmm. How are you doing that? How did Brandy get you there? How did you how do you? Well, I definitely had discipline to discipline yourself. <laughs> I've, I've had to learn, you know, like when you have a personality like mine, uh, making people laugh is just the thing you do mm. you know but that can also make other people feel a certain type of way mm. you know even even your your partner so being able to reel that in and you know understand like hey that's not what i'm doing like i all right so certain things i have to reel back turn off mm. um so that was a that was a learning curve for sure for me you know just because you know, you never want to make your partner feel this type of way mm -hmm. by how you are, just in general. Um, so I think it was just coming down to like respecting and understanding like, all right, when you're in a relationship, you have boundaries, mm. you know? And so like building those boundaries are things that I had to learn along the way of my relationship. Was that a hard pill for you to swallow? Like yeah. boundaries, I don't want boundaries. Yeah, for sure, <laughs> for sure. Cause I didn't, I'm like, what are boundaries, what? What were you talking about? What you is know? this boundaries thing? <laughs> um, but, you know, so I had to, you know, decide, like, what was more important. You know, like, I think my relationship is more important. So that's fine, you know. Um, but, yeah, it was, a, it was a huge learning curve for me because I never experienced anything like that before. Yeah. yeah. But look at the reward oh, in yeah. return, though. It's incredible, right? Yeah. No, for sure. Do you feel like being in relationship has actually helped you succeed more than when you were like single in the streets? Yeah. How so? Um, it shows uh, stability, partnership. Mm -hmm. um, I think from my partners and business partners, they they see that I can be committed, you know, in in so many different ways. Yeah. Um, and plus, when we're together, I feel like. You know, it's just, I do my best networking when we're together. Mm -hmm. I do, I'm able to maneuver a room better. I feel more, you know, like we went to a premiere the other weekend and I was like, I was there by myself because she was, she had a job someplace else and I was waiting on her to get there. But while I was there, I was like, man, this would be more lit if Brandy was here. <laughs> I'd be able to like, you know, and she was like, I told you. In your superpower. Like, <laughs> I'm like, yes, I know. I uh -uh. love that. Your woman is your superpower. Yeah. Do you believe that? Yeah. No, she's, yeah, she's the best thing that's, that's happened. I'm to totally me. stealing that. I'm going home and telling my husband that I'm his superpower. Yeah. I, mean, I always tell him I'm his purpose. Yeah. <laughs> like, I gave him purpose in life. Um, yeah. But I like superpower. I'm going to start stealing that one. Yeah. No, <laughs> You're going to be like, wait, Spicy's <laughs> using superpower all the time. Like, yeah, no. You should have trademarked that early. That's her. That's her. <laughs> She says so many things, man. And she's like, yo, you be taking my jokes. And I'm like, I'm not taking them. I'm, I'm giving you credit for your the thing that you said. Do you steal her content? Because I feel like couples that are in the same industry, like. You know, I don't, it's not like I steal her uh -huh. content. It's just like, she, like Brandy, she's soft spoken. And she'll say something that's so funny. I'm like, hey, Brandy just said this. And she's like, you really just stole my joke. Because everyone's laughing. I'm like, no, nah, I said that you said this. I just delivered it. Wait. This is hilarious because this is a common uh, thing in relationships, mm. but not even just like in the comedy world. Mm. I literally just had a couple that I counseled and they work together. They're in business together, mm. but one is kind of like the face of the business and presentation. And the other one is like 
doing the PowerPoint, right? Like creating the PowerPoint, but he's getting all the accolades because mm. he's the one delivering it. And so there's always this element of like, yeah, we did this together. And he announces like, thank you to my partner for helping me with this, but here's the bomb ass presentation. Mm -hmm. And because he's the face of it, who delivered it, he actually gets the glory the though. Mm -hmm. So because you're louder. <laughs> I am much louder. But you're I, getting the credit for her I material. I always, I always be like, I'm like, say it again. <laughs> all right brandy said this y'all so <laughs> you're like you're not gonna say that okay yeah. well it's mine then i'm gonna yeah. i'm gonna go ahead and deliver it um but yeah no nah, i i'm definitely always like pushing her like hey go ahead and say it say how it. does it work as far as projects so like because she's talent right mm -hmm. do you find yourself in situations where you're like oh i should put you in this project or i should create you know a, a scene about our lives like do you ever find yourself wanting to like work with your partner? Yeah, no, we have a channel together, uh, Brandy and Wes, and it's movie reviews, it's vlogging, it's the events we go to. Um, in terms of like a film, that is something I am working on. Um, you know, I do have like a few projects with her as the lead of it, but it's just it's just kind of like timing right now. You know, timing with the the project that is the one for her um also you know it's kind of like I I have to give her her lane for her to pursue the things that she mm -hmm. has without my name attached to it mm -hmm. you know um so there's there's that respect and she's done an incredible job like building partnerships and building her brand up as her own solo thing and I think that's super important as well I don't you know because I on our, when we first began, I cast like a big shadow, you mm -hmm. know, just with the followers and the content that I was producing, the partners that I had. Um, you know, it would be like, oh yeah, that's Wes's girl. Mm -hmm. Now it's like, no, that's Brandy. That's uh, that's Brandy's guy. Yeah, you know, like, and it's it's definitely. I love that she has her own lane and mm -hmm. the things that she does. You know, any jealousy ever come up for you? Like, dang it. <laughs> no. Now she's Hell good. No. good. I, no. I could never. I, I'm. I'm always gonna celebrate her wins. I'm always. I've always been the type of person that's like. Uh, I could celebrate other people's wins like it was my own because I'm just like, damn, I can't wait for myself to have a moment like that. Yay. You know? so, that's a good thought. That's yeah. that's how we keep it positive so oh, yeah. that like competitiveness doesn't get into the relationship. But if you guys are in the same industry, I imagine like there's always, you know, conversations about work. How do we leave work at, let's say, the office or on set when you guys are together? How do you avoid right bringing work into the house since you guys both happen to be in the same field I mean, well, we work for ourselves so um i'd say it's a little bit tougher for me to turn off than her um because i, I i'm just i'm very relentless with it mm -hmm. you know like i'm i'm thinking about the the next blockbuster move you know like what's mm -hmm. what's the movie gonna be like oh this could be a scene how do they shoot this um so she'll you know she'll be the one to reel me back in you know um especially if she calls me the screen slaver mm. and i like i'm just like let me put my phone down screen slaver i think that was on incredibles and i wish they never said that because <laughs> when she says it i'm just like phone's down what are we talking about so that's like the signal, right? Like yeah. the, the that's the like okay, um I need my I need to give my partner attention. I need balance this time. Yeah. And I think uh it's, I mean just we hear all the time about like how I you know our phones have taken over and we're constantly like using them for like work or just even entertainment. Mm -hmm. And so the fact that you respect when she says like, "Hey, let's turn it off." Like it's hard. be present. It's hard sometimes. <laughs> But that's good that you guys are at least acknowledging that one of us may not be present. Yeah. Right. And you want your relationship to thrive. But if mm -hmm. it's always just about work, it's hard to have like those softer, intimate moments for you guys to grow closer when the intimacy is around work the entire time. Mm hmm. Because you guys can have that. You could have like intellectual intimacy where you both are very stimulated, you know, from the same things that drive you. 
but we want to cover like all the gambits of intimacy yeah. from like emotional, spiritual, recreational, doing fun things with your partner. Mm -hmm. So I love that she's like, hey, come back to me. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. And she then you is. listen and then you're like, okay, yes, babe. It's it's tough. I don't listen all the time. I don't want to pretend like I'm the <laughs> She's best guy. She's going to play this back and be like, really? <laughs> yeah. You just lied to all those people. No, <laughs> no, nah, nah, yeah, no. Nah. I want to keep it, yeah, completely 100, though. Yeah, it's it's tough. It's a learning curve for me. How do we stay motivated? How do we stay motivated in our career and then motivated in our relationship? Give me career first. Uh, There's no plan B. Mm. You know, there's no plan B. Um, I completely love what I do uh, through and through. I couldn't see myself doing anything else. Mm. Uh, so that's how I stay motivated. Um, like this is my only option. This is this is the only option for real. Um, uh, and you know, then I I try to explore other things to to ignite that same passion. Mm. You know, like real estate or investing things like that. Um, because I constantly, you know, I'm constantly in a state of growing mm. and learning and uh absorbing you know i don't want to waste this time i have here yeah you know so and then in my relationship um man i feel just extremely lucky mm. you know like she's a festive person she you know like they're the things that she's into i can't say that i'm necessarily into all the time you know like mm. i'm not really trying to dance all night you know <laughs> she will but like i'll i find happiness in watching her mm. be happy um you know she's you know she's uh she taught me how to fight for a relationship mm. you know um so those are things i you know i really appreciate because that's helped me grow in so many different ways yeah uh, so that's how I stay motivated. I'm like, yo, like, she's definitely made me better. She's definitely challenged me. Yeah. Um, and you know, when I was younger, if I got challenged, I'd be like, I ain't trying to do this no more. Sorry. Like, you know, I'm yeah. gonna go have fun someplace else. Uh, and you know, this right here has been the one that I've had to like fight for the most, learn the most, grind it out with you know be uncomfortable when i just want to be comfortable mm -hmm. um but yeah so you know you just described also as your relationship with your career because you have done the fighting the grinding the discomfort but it's you and know, now you're mastering i thought relationship, it was, I, thought those, relationship. I thought those were, were the same thing you know before i thought like uh you know you know how I work should be the same as my relationship or how I like talk to my homies should be the same as my relationship mm -hmm. and I realized yeah no I, <laughs> I learned, oh boy <laughs> I, I learned that they're, they're two different things <laughs> and you know um how I command a set is completely different like Wes on set versus Wes at home is it's what's it's the a difference different, it's a huge difference. I think like, a lot of men can grow there's from no, that. There's no consequences when I'm on set. I mean, there's consequences. I may not have the job, but, yeah. you know, I'm managing people, but there's no, like, like, this is for a limited time, mm -hmm. you know? This is for a longer time. So this, the relationship requires a different side of me, you know? Mm. Um, and it took, you know, like, it took me a while to understand that, like, damn, why do I have to be like this over here? It sounds Why like a more considerate, like sensitive yeah, side. Yeah, considerate, sensitive. Um, Where at work you get to just be about efficiency. Efficiency. I don't have, like, it's not really about vulnerability over here. It's just like, listen, we got to get this done. But I'm going to be, <laughs> you know, I'm going to be cool about it. Mm -hmm. um, and I, none of this, this is personal. <laughs> you know, like, let's just, let's get to the end goal here. And, like, I keep, I keep set fun and light all the time you know like that's just my personality and then at home it's it's a different type of thing it's just a different type of uh communication and vulnerability and openness and up and down and you know like understand like this this up and down is for this moment you know but then you figure out ways to work around it or figure out ways like hey we need to take a when you take 20 minutes and then come back to yeah. it, you know, like it's not going any place. Like this isn't a nine to five. This is a 
twenty four seven. You know, so. But I love that. Like this conversation started with you talking about how you nurture relationships, and you're in it for the long haul. And you're like, okay, you know, if I gotta, you know, check in with this person, and you know, offer my services and show up for this person, uh, you know, gotta have those advocates. And then with relationship you sound like in your youth you were more quick to like nah i'm good like and walk away whereas like being in partnership with brandy now has taught you like how to nurture romantic relationships for the long haul and you probably didn't think it was going to (laughs) be this much work but that's Mm -mm. what makes this better is getting through it right yeah so you're becoming like a master of all relationships now yeah yeah i guess i guess you're right i didn't even think about that i didn't think about that at all you brought that out of me (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> what? okay you're gonna share with everybody where they can find your projects uh yes. where they can book you where they can hire you what they can expect from you tell us how to oh, reach man. you guys you can find me what's good w-u-z-g-o-o-d um wait is it this way it's one of the <laughs> here here um uh yeah just google my name you'll be able to find me on any social media platform uh Coming up, I have a short film dropping at the top of the year. Right now, what is out is Kevin Hart's Masterclass exclusively on masterclass.com. If you're my personal friend, hit me up. I can send you a pass that expires in about (laughs) 20 days. Um, But, yeah, and, um, you know, you will find sketches. You will find pictures of me and Brandy. You will find, find everything, honestly, like... And if you're a filmmaker, hit me up too. And yeah, I'm always looking to pass on information. I love it. You guys can always play with my Twitter or stroke my IG at Spicy Mari. Go to thespicylife.com. Share this episode with a friend. Make sure that you click and subscribe. And there you guys have it. You have just been spiced. The Spicy Life.